Today, we are going to talk about the restorative rescue strategy on TikTok Tuesday. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right. So according to Cincinnati Children's Hospital, medications prescribed for tick disorders, the people who are taking them rarely experience a reduction in symptoms. So less than 50% of people... Re let me rephrase, sorry, starting over, we're rephrasing that. Less than 50% of people who are taking tick disorder medications are seeing a reduction in symptoms. So less than 50%. So we know that medications for tick disorders are not effective and there's tons of reasons why. There is also another study where we start to look at how long it takes your doctor to actually get current data and use it in practice. So. In, on average, it takes your doctor 17 years, 17 years for only 14% of new scientific discovery to impact patient care. It's been estimated that approximately 30 to 40% of patients do not receive treatments of proven effectiveness. So how does that correlate when we start to look at this study of Cincinnati Children's Hospital? Well, they're saying you know, less than 50% of people are seeing a reduction in symptoms. And this is saying, well, 30 to 40% of people in general are not having effective treatments. So what does that tell us? That really tells us that these things are starting to correlate. We can see that there is this connection that we're using these medications. We're not seeing these symptoms change, right? And we also know that 20 to 50% of patients receive interventions that are potentially harmful or have increased side effects, which I see very frequently when I start to look at the use of medications for tick disorders. Why? Because they are prescribed off-label. What does that mean? We look at something like guanfacine. It is a blood pressure medication, and we are giving it to children in an effort to control their tics. Well, in the meantime, it is altering the way that their body is regulating their blood pressure. So we are really using these ineffective treatments. And so when we start to look at all of these things, we know that current studies, so you just heard me say, it takes about 17 years for current studies and only 14% of current studies to impact patient care. We know in the last two years, there has been a very significant study looking at Tourette's and related disorders and how Tourette's and related disorders are related to immune system dysregulation. Immune system dysregulation. So what is that telling us? That's telling us that tick disorders are not purely neurological right? If we're starting to look at these studies that your doctor is probably not going to have in practice for another 30 years, we're starting to look at the fact that tics and related disorders, Tourette's, OCD, tics, ADHD, all of these things, they have an underlying immune system dysregulation. And so then we have to start looking at the fact that many people just cannot believe that I say tic disorders are not purely neurological, but they are not purely neurological. When we start to look at these studies and we start to look at things like immune system dysregulation, if that's really at the root, why are we seeing this immune system dysregulation? What is going on? So I will tell you that I have been on the immune system, neurological system dysregulation train for a very, very long time, at least 12 years, right? And the reason that I do what I do and really am trying to change the paradigm around paradigm around tick disorders and around Tourette's is because of my own son. So 12 years ago, my son was diagnosed with a transient neurological tick. One day he was fine. The next day he was just ticking off the charts, clapping his hands, saying words, shaking his head, blinking. But now I can look back and see kind of these early signs of things that were creeping up that kind of led to this perfect storm for him. And you can read about it in the book, TikTok, that's available on Amazon. But what happens was we really started to dig deep. We went to probably 10 different doctors. We tried eight different medications. At one point, my son was on six medications at one time. I went for a third opinion somewhere. That third opinion doctor was like, I would never give all my kids these medications at the same time, take them off. And so we were just going from doctor to doctor, um, getting told the same thing, ignore it or take a medication. And the medications, obviously, you know, we talk about the Cincinnati Children's Study, were not effective. They were not working. In fact, in most cases, they were making him worse. And so at one point, I pulled him out of school to homeschool him because he could not thrive. He could not function in school because he was such a wreck. And so 
I started really doing a lot of soul searching. I was the mom who was Googling all night long, like many of you. I was crying into my pillow. I was crying and praying in rooms full of other mothers. Somebody please give me a solution. Somebody please help me to help my son because I don't know what to do. And watching him struggle is the most heartbreaking thing I've ever done. And through my research, I started to discover all of these things about how your environment impacts your genetics, how your environment impacts your health, how your gut health was so important to your brain health. So I decided I was going to go back to school. I was going to relearn everything I thought I knew about health and wellness. And I did. And I have a whole new perspective. So when we talk about holistic, we are not talking about woo-woo. I'm going to sage you and rub crystals on you. When I talk about holistic, I'm talking about a full body approach. What is that whole connection with your entire body? Every system. Your neurologist doesn't talk to your podiatrist. Your podiatrist doesn't talk to your gastroenterologist. Your pediatrician isn't talking to your osteopath. You have all these doctors that you're going to see and there's a disconnection. Nobody's talking to each other. Nobody's looking at the connection of what is going on in your body. And that's what we do holistically and functionally. We want to look at what is that impact of all of these connections on your body. So I actually do it very, very scientifically. I want to know. I want data. I am very science-brained. I want this information. So through the process, I created a three-step proprietary process that I use with every single client. And we start with something called comprehensive neuroimmune analysis. I have been doing comprehensive neuroimmune analysis long before the study on immune system dysregulation came out. Why? Because I knew there was a connection with his immune system and his brain and everything that he was experiencing. So I created this this system called Comprehensive Neuroimmune Analysis, where basically we are going to look at about 1,200, maybe a little less, depending on who we're working with, biomarkers, meaning we are going to look at stool. We are looking at food sensitivity. We're looking at genetics. We're looking at heavy metals, environmental toxins, mold toxicity, um, like looking at all of these things in combination so that we can properly look at the immune and neurological system connection and create an analysis, look at the data. So the next piece is for us to create this foundational foundational connection method. So anybody can run labs. And I have people tell me this, Dr. Piper, I read your book and I ran all these labs, but I feel like we're worse, not better. Anybody can run labs. You can get labs anywhere. You can get in the book. You can look at the labs that we did. You can order them. But what you have to understand is not everybody can look at the deeper connection between the immune and nervous system. You have to have somebody who is an expert at looking at this data and then connecting those dots, which is where we get to that restorative rescue strategy. I don't just look at the data that's on on the sheet of paper. I don't just take this sheet of paper and say, you have this, 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 and the other thing. That's not what we're doing. We're taking all of this data And we're looking at it and we are comparing and contrasting to your symptoms. We're comparing and contrasting to your environment. We are comparing and contrasting to everything that's going on in your life with this data. So for example, my health coach that works for me now, his daughter went through the program and he came to me and he goes, I really feel like there is some kind of underlying issue, but we can't figure out what it is. We've been to doctor after doctor. We've done all these things. We've done some genetics. We've done all this, but we don't, we don't know what to do. And so I took that data and I said, I'm looking at all of this testing information that you have. I'm looking at all of these results and I'm comparing and contrasting to what your daughter is experiencing. This is what's being missed. So when we look at regular old lab data, the ranges are really wide. Why? Because they're usually taken from people that are sick. So they're very skewed, meaning most of them are trending low. So when your doctor starts to look at lab data and your doctor usually only looks at blood work, Blood work is not very telling at all. We use the functional lab testing. We want to look at the function, what's going on with the gut, the food sensitivities, toxins, uh, genetics, all of these things. We're looking at the function of the body, okay? We're not just looking at blood work because blood work only tells you really, for the most part, what's in the serum. It's not telling you what is actually being utilized by the cell. That's a whole nother presentation for a whole nother day. But we really have to take this scientific data And then we have to connect the dots. So in in the case of my health coach, you know, she really had the symptoms of candida overgrowth, but they were not glaringly obvious on the paper, which is why it kept getting missed, kept getting missed, kept getting missed. Nobody was correlating 
what she was experiencing, her symptoms, with what was really on the paper, what the data was saying, and how you connected those dots. And once we did that, we got her right back on track. You can watch their testimonial. It's the Sparks family. Um, but we got her right back on track and she's thriving and she's doing amazing. Why? Because we were able to analyze that data. So this is why that foundational connection method is extremely important. Anybody can run lab testing. You can get lists of lab tests everywhere. Lab tests are not just numbers on paper. Lab tests are needed to be used to clinically correlate what's going on in your life, in your environment with your symptoms. This is where the magic happens. This is what makes our process magical, is the fact that we can sit down and make these connections. We are looking above and beyond what's on paper. So yes, I want to comprehensively create an analysis of your immune system, your nervous system, your lifestyle, your environment, everything that's going along with it. So this is where that restorative rescue strategy comes in. When we're looking at that restorative rescue strategy, we're talking about creating short-term and long-term goals for you and your child and your family so that you can learn how to thrive, right? So that you can get yourself back on track. This is not an overnight process. This is not something that you can take a magical pill potion or magic bean. This is where we really start to dig deep and do the work. You have to do the work and you have to consider it didn't just take you this long for your child to experience these symptoms. It's been building over time. Like I said, I could see it with my son. It was building over time. Started with some mood swings. Then we had some eye blinking that was called allergies. And then it just got progressively worse for, for us. And yes, I know some people, it starts overnight. This is where we start to look at pans, pandas. But we really have to look at this overall dysregulation. And so when we start with this restorative rescue strategy, it's about giving everybody this unique plan. Our clients are not on the same plan. Everybody is at a different place. They're using different supplements. They're using a different diet. They are using different products in their home. For the most part, a lot of us are using the same products in our home. But I will say we're using this unique approach based on the unique data from your you or your child. We're using this unique data. We're taking this information, we're compiling it, we're comparing, we're contrasting it, and then we are connecting those dots to create that restorative rescue strategy for you. Where we are going to focus on diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and the right supplementation for the right people in the right amount at the right time. That's how supplements are meant to work. They are meant to support. They are not a magical pill. So if you're missing something, you're going to supplement it. You're going to add something in. So you're going to get a little bit extra by putting in a supplement. But you have to change your diet to be able to have those two things connect, right? We have to have more nutrients in our diet, and then we're going to put in our supplements. Supplements do not work overnight. It takes a, a period of time for them to build up. So you have supplements that you're taking that may take two or three months to really have an impact on the body. So we're looking at diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation. We're looking at lifestyle and environment. And then we are creating these unique long-term and short-term goals for our clients. This is where the restorative rescue strategy comes in. So this is why I want parents to understand tick disorders are not purely neurological. There are a lot of factors that go into impacting your child's health. And I did an Instagram reel a couple of weeks ago about somebody who had said, hey, you know, my husband had ticks, my son has ticks. And I'm like, yes, there may be a genetic connection, right? Maybe, however, maybe your husband has some celiac disease that he doesn't know about. And so gluten really affects him. And in turn, gluten really affects your child. And when we start to look at this testing, we can say, okay, maybe we need to take out these inflammatory factors. Maybe they're predisposed to chronic aggressive inflammation like many of my clients are genetically. And so we can look at this data and we can start to, replace and remove things in the diet and the lifestyle to improve their health. So even if we are saying, hey, there might be a genetic connection, there might be, but your genetics do not predetermine your destiny. So for example, you know, we see genetics in things like colon cancer and breast cancer. Just because you have the genes, or even if you have the genes for Alzheimer's, just because you have the genes doesn't mean you are going to get it. Your environment signals the genes. So when we look at your genes, we know what we need to remove and what we need to replace in order to give you optimal health to support that genetics. You know, that's really our whole long-term goal is to get you to where you are genetically optimized. And that makes all the difference in the world because you're getting the right nutrition for the right person at the right time 
in the right amount. And that's what you need to know about supplementation is that it has to be for the right person at the right time in the right amount. We have to make sure that we're not just haphazardly throwing things in. If you have a lot of inflammation, if you have a lot of overgrowth in your gut, you may be throwing in supplements that are doing no good because you can't absorb them. Or you may be trying to push a heavy metal detox without the nutrition to support that. Your nutrition and the way that your body detoxify makes a huge difference. So if you are eating hot Cheetos and Slim Jims from the gas station as your daily meal, and then you're trying to have a heavy metal detox, you're gonna feel like crap. Why? Because you don't have the nutrition. You don't have the cellular capability to detoxify from those heavy metals. So this is why when we're doing this restorative rescue strategy, we do it in a very specific steps. We don't haphazardly say, oh, you have heavy metals, let's do a heavy metal detox. Because it has to be done in a certain way. It has to be done in certain steps. And that's where that restorative rescue strategy really starts to make a difference.